26 verses 26 through 29 during the meal. Are we during the meal? Yes. Okay, so they're having a meal. This wasn't uh, the last supper of Yeshua. It was a Passover meal. It was a meal they were sharing together. During the meal, Yeshua took and blessed the bread and broke it and gave it to his disciples. Take, eat, this is my body. Taking the cup and thanking Yahweh, he gave it to them. Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, Yahweh's new covenant poured out for many people for the forgiveness of sins. I'll not be drinking wine from this cup again until that new day when I drink it with you in the kingdom of my Father. My question when we look at the matzah is do you see Yeshua in the matzah? Well, number one, we know that matzah is made without leaven. And Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15 tells us we have a high priest in Yeshua who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet without sin. Matzah is a proper representation of one who would live a life without sin. Second, we discover that matzah is pierced before baking. And Isaiah 53, 5 says, he was pierced for our transgressions. How could the prophet Isaiah, prophesying of a coming Messiah, know that he would be pierced for our transgressions? Number three, matzah ends up with marks and stripes. That's due to the baking process. And so when you look at it, it's obviously a striped bread with marks on it, and we're told in Isaiah 53, 5 that he was bruised because of our iniquities, and in 1 Peter 2, 24, by his stripes you were healed. These things can't be coincidence, that what was prophesied by the prophets of old took place in one man. When you add all this together with all the prophecies about his birth in Bethlehem, you come to an amazing understanding that the God of the Passover was trying to tell you the Passover is coming and be ready to receive him. Matzah tells the salvation story. Paul writes this in 1 Corinthians 11 when he's describing how he came to understand the Passover in terms of Yeshua. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. Yeshua the Messiah on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Now, who is this Paul that is talking about this? Paul is a rabbi of the rabbis, a Pharisee of the Pharisees. Paul is one who, when he couldn't see the truth, was so zealous for his faith that he went about the, the process of rounding up and arresting those who would believe that Yeshua was the Messiah. It didn't make sense to Paul, a student of Gamaliel. He didn't see how that could fulfill scriptures until one thing changed his life forever. That was the fact that he came to a day when he had a personal encounter with Yeshua himself. When he was on his way to arrest Christians and a bright light came out of the sky and he heard a voice. And the voice said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Not why are you persecuting those people. Why are you persecuting me? And Saul, the rabbi, said, Who are you, Lord? Good question when a voice speaks to you. Because there's many answers you can get. <laughs> not, a voice, not all voices that speak are going to be good voices. Who are you, Lord? And the way... Saul relates that is, he heard this, I am Yeshua, the one you are persecuting. Now imagine that. In that one moment, you're, you're faced with an impossibility. I've lived all my life zealously. I've supported uh, the Torah as I was taught to understand it. But I come to one moment when all of a sudden I'm face to face with I am speaking with the one that I said can't be the Messiah, could not have risen from the dead, and yet now he's alive and speaking to me. This is what I call a moment of decision. This is a moment when Paul's got to decide, is this, 
Is this for real or is this not for real? And whatever you think about it, and you have a right to your decisions and your personal opinions, Paul made a very clear decision that day. That was not the result of a bad overdose of opioids. That was not because he was a little high on whatever the substance of current drinking was. Clear-headed, he had an encounter with God. Those kinds of encounters are taking place all over the world right now. In an amazing way, especially among Islamic communities, we are hearing from all over the world of Islamic people who are suddenly in a dream or in a vision or some say they saw with their physical eyes having encounters with Yeshua and changing in an instant from being one who believes in Muhammad and Islam to suddenly committing their lives to Yeshua as the son of the living God. That's what happened to Paul. He had to make one decision right there. And so he made his decision. It's very interesting to me that what Paul says here is that he received this from the Lord. For you see, when he got converted, he went out into the Arabian desert for three years to get his theology straightened out with Yahweh. Three years to say, I have got to dismantle things that aren't right and reinterpret things in the right way. And so Paul emerges as the greatest theologian in the early church. Why? Because he was the smartest Jew among them. Amen. He had the highest education a Jew could have. He knew the Torah backwards and forwards more than any of them did. And suddenly the Torah came alive and he saw that it pointed to Yeshua as the Messiah. And so what he said is he described the way Yeshua explained it to him. that Yeshua took that piece of bread and he broke it. And he passed it on to the other disciples and he said, this is my body which is broken for you, something they could not have possibly understood at that meal. This is Passover. Things are great. They just came out of his triumphal entry into Jerusalem where crowds were cheering him. What can he mean? They could not have conceived as they shared that matzah with one another that the very next day he would be on a cross already, crucified and dead and buried. He was preparing them for what was coming. This is my body. And the church has picked up on that for when he said, do this in remembrance of me, is whenever we break the bread of Passover to remember him. Some say, and I would have no reason to disagree with it, whenever you break bread, you can always choose to do that. You break bread and remember Yeshua who gave his life for you. So take a piece of matzah now and let's, let's, eat, let's eat this piece of matzah remembering that Yeshua gave his life for you. And now we come to the third cup. If you don't have any juice left in your cup, you can pour some more. We fill our cup, but we don't drink it yet. Take this third cup and hold it in your hand. and everyone together. Abba, I lift this cup and ask for your forgiveness for striving in my own strength, for not depending upon you, and for violating your ways. I ask that you sanctify me, deliver me, redeem me, B'Shem Yeshua, in the name of Yeshua. And now we say the blessing together. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu, Malik HaOlam, blessed are you, Yahweh our God, King of the universe, creator of the fruit of the vine, and drink the cup together.